is, at this point, we'd like to thank all special guests we have here today, and we'd also like to remind everyone to please turn off all cell phones and other noise-making devices. Um, up first is Gabe Charlin, and introducing him is Taylor Thompson. It's the first trip that I can remember how I felt. 
what I saw, the sounds I heard, the things I touched, and the food I tasted. It was the first time I could recognize the impact that these sensorial experiences had on me. I remember what it was like to eat my first traditional Japanese breakfast, white rice, miso soup, an egg roll, grilled fish, usually to a crisp, and tsukamono pickles. I remember each meal starting with phrases of gratitude such as itadakimasu, meaning let us eat, and gochitsu sama deshita, meaning thank you for this meal. My dad and I took Japanese lessons for a whole year before the trip. The woman who taught us taught us not only how to speak, but how to approach Japanese customs and the history behind their traditions. You see, just going on the trip to see the sites is only half the experience. The other half is understanding why. Why was this temple built in multiple tiers? Why do people spin blocks of wood before entering into a holy space? Why do people thoroughly cleanse themselves before taking a bath? There's so much more to a place than just the place itself. People are the creators. People make a place what it is. Without understanding why people did what they did, there's no way you can truly understand the place itself. You will come to a place if you sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? or right in three quarters, or maybe not quite, or go around back and sneak in from behind. Simple it's not for a mind maker upper to make up their mind. Trust me when I say it's inevitable that travel may put you in a difficult situation or in a place you're not all too familiar with. About seven years ago, I went rock climbing with my dad in Red Rock Canyon, Nevada. It's a magical place. A place that, when you lose yourself in the heart of the canyons, you find your soul in a land destitute of human destructiveness, affluent in the natural benevolence of Mother Nature. Once there, your spirit can wander freely among some of the most spectacular rock formations in the world, rocks of the deepest reds and oranges. It was among these rocks where, 400 feet above the ground, I realized that the path I had chosen ended. It was obvious that I couldn't continue to climb. The only choice was to create a new path. So seniors, congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head, and you have feet in your shoes. Oh. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. You are the ones who will decide where to go. We've learned a lot here at Collegiate. Our experience is not to be taken for granted. We've been given the skills necessary to succeed on our next adventure, and it's just around the corner. But there will be so many more opportunities to go somewhere that will arise in the following four years. Will you take advantage of them? Will you get to familiarize yourself with the world in which we live? The colleges we're about to go to are only microcosms in a very, very large world, full of wonderful places and people. I've been lucky to meet a few. Will you?